Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006, the hydrosphere. We're now going to define a very important quantity which is used in environmental aquatic chemistry and that's called the alkalinity. What is the alkalinity? It's not the concentration of base, OH minus, but it is related to the total concentration of base. So alkalinity of an aqueous solution is not the OH concentration, it's the concentration, the total concentration of titratable base, i.e. it is the total effective concentration of base, sometimes abbreviated to ALK. Why do we need this thing? Well, because as I said in the very first mini lectures, the aqueous environment is complicated. N not all the quantities in there are OH, there are many bases, for example sulphate, uh, the silicates, borates, you name it. So it's important to be able to get some summary information on what's in the solution and that's where alkalinity comes into it. And here's a misspelling for concentration. So we let's look for a weak acid solution, a weak acid, weak salt solution for example. And the alkalinity here would be the net amount of base in the solution. So here we have the OH concentration minus the acid concentration because this is the uh, this is the acid form of OH minus. So OH minus H plus gives us the net concentration of uh, acid in that regard for the OH species, and we also have the dissociated HA species A minus. This can also react with H plus to form HA molecule. So that's the concentration of A minus, and this is the net concentration of uh, OH minus. Or you can think of it as this base plus this base minus this acid. Total concentration of bases minus total concentration of acids. And here is another formula for that. Um, this is just a rearrangement of the formula for alpha zero. Remember, alpha zero is the concentration of A minus divided by the total concentration of A material. So C times C, the total concentration of A material in the liquid times alpha zero, the dissociation constant, gives us the amount of A minus. So that's why the dissociation constant's useful in one way. You can multiply it by total concentration to give us actual concentration. This is the one that's in the solution and this is the concentration C that you put into the material by weighing it out. What does it mean if the alkalinity is negative? Shall we think about that? What does it mean if the alkalinity is negative? Well, look at this formula. There are positive quantities in here. Concentrations are always positive. And this is positive. So how can we get a negative? Seems easy. I'll let, I think you can answer that yourself. But think about it. See you later. Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006, the hydrosphere. We're now going to look at something called the buffer value, which is a quantity used to establish how good a buffer the water is. Whether water is a, a good buffer is an important quantity to know. As I've just said, living organisms are greatly affected by pH changes within a factor of pH 2 units. 2 sounds like not a lot but actually it's a factor of 100 because pH is on a log scale. Uh, if they differ by 2 units that basically means they're differing by a factor of 100 if you're using a log 10 scale. Okay so what is the buffer value? The buffer value is a measure of how resistant the liquid is to pH change. The buffer value or buffer capacity is the derivative of the alkalinity with respect to pH. Huh? What does that mean? Okay, well it means that if the pH changes by adding acid or base, then if the alkalinity doesn't change, the net amount of acid or base, if that doesn't change, it's a good buffer. Somehow if you add acid or base, it doesn't change the net amount of base, in the solution. If, that, if adding acid or base doesn't change the net amount of base, that's a good 
buffer. And what is the derivative? The derivative is the change in the alkalinity with respect to pH. If it doesn't change, the derivative is zero, and that means it's a good buffer. So on this plot here, we should have showed this before, this is a plot of the dissociation fraction uh, as a function of pH for a weak acid. So this is alpha 1 and this is alpha 0. So at very low pH, um, all of the uh, acid has dissociated and it's almost 100% uh, A minus. And that's why we see alpha 0 up here, which is the concentration of A minus divided by the total amount of A material. If that ratio is nearly 1, it's basically saying all of the quantity at low pH is A minus. Now as the pH becomes lower, going to the left, adding more acid, the amount of A minus decreases because we're adding acid and the H plus reacts with the A minus to form H plus, sorry, H A molecule. And so the fraction of A minus starts to drop down to zero. At the same time, the amount of H A increases, and this is described by H by alpha one times the total concentration of acid in the solution. Alpha 1 is A minus joined with 1 hydrogen and that goes to 1. Okay so that's the uh, uh, the degree of dissociations as a function of pH but we were talking about buffer capacity and um, over here we have a plot um, of the alkalinity that's this curve up here function as of pH for some kind of substance. In fact, it turns out uh, that this is the acetic acid acetate solution. So it's a weak acid sodium acetate solution. It's exactly the solution we were talking about before uh, as Ka and Ha. Okay, so um, here is the alkalinity versus pH. And it starts off like that and it goes steep and it goes flat and it goes steep and it goes up like that. If you turn your head on the left, you will see that it looks like a titration curve. It's essentially just a titration curve. Um, if this were the vertical axis and this was concentration, we would have pH changing. Then it rapidly changes around a particular um, equivalence point, then it flattens out, then it changes rapidly, then it flattens out again. But here we've plotted the titration curve the other way around. Hope that doesn't confuse you. But, you know, in chemistry, we plot things in different ways and we've got to get used to seeing things in different ways. Now, why did I do that that way? Because the definition of buffer capacity is derivative of alkalinity with respect to pH. So that's the slope of this line. Uh, it's the slope of this line. So here the slope is very large and here the beta value, that's the buffer, buffer capacity, or buffer value, is very large. And here it becomes flatter, not completely flat, and we see the value drops down. And then it starts to go up again in this very steep region. It's the most steep at this midpoint here. And then it goes nearly to zero around here for a very long region, and then it starts to go up. So at this region here, as we are changing the pH, apparently the alkalinity is not changing. See, alkalinity is nearly flat as we change the pH. That means the slope of this line is nearly zero. That means it's a good buffer from here to here. It's a good buffer. Um, and here, it's an okay buffer, but it doesn't really stay flat for that long. It's a, it's a buffer, but not a great buffer. All right. And here, in the mid-region, it's actually a great anti-buffer, because beta is large. And here, of course, uh, at the very far endpoints, it's not a good buffer either. So it's a resistance of the solution to changes in pH. Buffer value. See you later. Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006, the hydrosphere. Let's look a little bit at buffer values for multi-component systems. Uh, as we've just said, aqueous environments can be quite complicated, comprising multiple anions, cations, multiple components, we call them. So let's look at the buffer value for multiple component systems. Well, the buffer value is still the derivative of the alkalinity with respect to pH, but because 
there's multiple components in the solution, we expect that the behavior will be more complicated. So on the top here, we have um, the buffer fraction, a fraction of dissociation as a function of pH. And over here we have beta, buffer capacity, plotted on this curve as the dotted line. And on the right we have the alkalinity. So the dotted line is the derivative. And let's look at here the, um, uh, the species. So here we at low pH we have maybe a lot of HAC. And then the AC starts to dissociate uh, at 4.5 pH. So this is the most rapid change between species here. And then as the pH gets even lower, perhaps there's some ammonia in the solution, uh, eventually the pH, the OH gets so high that the NH4 plus starts to lose its H plus and form ammonia. So here we have the fraction of uh, undissociated uh, base NH3, so this would be alpha 1, NH3 plus 1 hydrogen gives you NH4 plus, going down to zero and correspondingly NH3 going up, but we haven't shown that. Now exactly the same points under here, we have the alkalinity. So around here, around about uh, this pH 4.75, we have quite a rapid change in alkalinity, or pH we can say. It's actually net base. Why, why is it rapid change of net base? Because we have the base being formed minus the amount of conjugate acid. So it's changing very rapidly. So we see a peak over here, uh, a big rapid change over here, and then flattens out over here, and then rapid change when the ammonia comes in and then flat. So uh, in this system, we have, that we have a good buffer. Obviously, in this region here, it's relatively flat. We have a good buffer in this region here, and maybe in this region here, but in the intermediate regions, we have rapid change of species, and the buffer value isn't very good. So that's what the buffer value is telling you. It's telling you that there is some kind of rapid change of species going on. Not much resistance to pH change. You start to see why some of this is useful. See you later.